Hello, this is Cheryl Merrill, and it's February 26, 2022. How are you doing out there? I, uh, <clears throat> I'm coming back for another podcast because I uh, just wanted to share some things about um, uh, that, that buddy Merrill of the Lawrence Welk Show who, uh, um, you know, gave me uh, some kind of a way to live on after I was born out of wedlock and didn't kill me or anything because I didn't have abortion back then. But he, he somehow allowed me to live, but barely. Um, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, it was very, very difficult to be under his helm as well as my mother's. And they made it look like everything was peachy keen financially and everything. And you know, But, but it was a very hard family to be raised in. And so it, it, there's a lot of <clears throat> difficulties of my... You know, looking at how delusional I was that thinking my dad was this a genius, a famous guitarist, you know, when I was a kid, and it turned out to be pretty much a lie, and he was pretty much reduced in the 70s to a big fat zero, nothing. Um, and when you realize that about your dad, that he was misrepresenting his his skills as a guitarist, that he wasn't that good of a guitarist, and you realize that it was a lot of illusions just sitting in the back of a on television in back of Lawrence Welk, just strumming the guitar, you know, kind of promoted an image of your being a musician there that was famous, you know. But in, in retrospect, he wasn't that good of a guitarist. You know, I am I was a musician, and I played with some very fine uh, musicians when I was singing in a jazz workshop a while back, and I saw what real musicianship is. And I can tell you that Buddy Merrill was just a very average kind of player. There was nothing unique about his playing at all. Um, you know, uh, I know that he played the steel guitar that gave him another marketing uh, slant to his guitar playing, but the, the the quality of the recordings just weren't there. You know, it, it, they just weren't there. But anyway, so I, I just wanted to say that um, it was really difficult being raised in his household because um, he he really, you know, didn't, strive to improve his guitar playing you have to keep and continue to 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 improve you know people would play eight hours to 12 hours a day guitar uh, to get into these bands to be to be good bands you know you can't just can't make it by recording uh do it in, a, in the recording booth you can't you can't make it that way and so on the lawrence welk show nothing's very challenging you're just playing the same chords over and over and over again that you you kind of you know, really do not have an impact as a guitarist and bass guitarist anymore. So, you know, I noticed that, that the the key thing to why he left uh, playing on television was because Lynn Anderson, the famous singer who did uh, Rose Garden song, everyone loves that song. It is a very great song. She was a really good singer and not just that song, but she had some other hits too. And when I noticed that uh, my dad did not play steel guitar behind her, that she used her own band, I realized that that was the end of my dad's career. I mean, if you can't get in there with Lynn Anderson and be in the background there, that she has to bring in her own band number, that's when you're finished. you know. So he got very frustrated and mentally ill, and he sent uh, his Fender guitar back to uh, Stratocaster, Fender guitar back to the company that gave him a free one early on, and he said he just didn't, you know, didn't feel he was getting enough uh, promotion anymore, and he just wanted to give it back. Had he uh, kept it, it would have been worth a lot of money, and he could have paid for his ch- children's college educations. But he had no vision for our lives, and except for having children. And my poor sister Melody, who had a very high IQ and was very, very outgoing and had a really nice personality, didn't even make it past her freshman year of high school. They pulled her out because they wanted they wanted to make sure to get her on track to have babies. Okay, and she had five children, and then she died from bacterial meningitis and had to ad- adopt them out before that happened. And so, you know, the whole thing was a mess. Um, and uh, the thing, the thing that I wanted to say is being a, a daughter or a wife of a musician is never an easy thing, and it's only worth it if the guy is really, really good. Okay. Guitarists have improved. Their techniques have improved over the decades tremendously. I mean, my dad was nothing compared to George Benson. My, my dad was nothing. I, he thought of himself as being something, but he really wasn't a good guitarist. 
He really wasn't. You know, it's easy to fake things on recordings. You can continue to, you know, retrack it and re-record things to make it sound good. But when it comes down to it, you're not playing live very much. Uh, everything's recorded. Um, and um, I, I just, you know, have to be honest that my dad was not that good of a guitarist. And I'm sorry that I encouraged him to convert his some of his albums to uh, for vinyl albums to digital that he put on YouTube. I mean, sorry, not YouTube, on iTunes. You know, and he, he, you know, he could never because of his his uh, um, dedication, half-assed dedication to being a guitarist. He he was a half-ass at everything else. He was a half-ass at being a father. He was half-baked at being a, a husband. He was just a half-baked man who never really saw his true potential relying on that gig of the Lawrence Welk show. It's just like static, old, you know, um, you know, there's just nothing uh, interesting about that program whatsoever. It was designed to market for the elderly who wanted to sing the old waltz standard music, and sing to, the, you know, to play to that. And their music was very uh, boring, much of the time, and that era is gone, and so you know all the all the audience is practically dead, and so I just wanted to say that um, the uh, sad thing about you know my my dad was uh, um, really delusional about himself, and it was very sad to see you know how he had, had to face that he was really he was not really a great musician, not anywhere near being a good musician, a great musician, like he represented through his his wife to me, what a genius he was, you know, when I was a little girl. So with that said, uh, I wanted to say that, that he just um, lost his soul to these lies. He was never a good dad. He was never a good musician. He was not, ever, you know, the guys in the 60s, the Beatles and everything came along and just kicked him out of the water completely. Like he's, a, he's absolutely nothing. He's absolutely nothing. And I have, you know, very little respect for the man, no respect for him because of how he, how he treated me and my sister and how he, he abused my mother and, uh, you know, made her very, you know, crazy. She, she became crazy because of him, you know, and I, um, I, all I can say is it was a nightmare and, um, I don't miss them. I don't miss them. And whatever they say good about them, you know, you're free to think whatever you want. It, you, I, I had some relatives just recently speak to me about it, um, commenting on, oh, well, these neighbors really like him a lot. Well, where did they hear that? Did they talk to the neighbors? Um, you know, he's lived in, in uh, since 1986 in uh, Wildomar, and they were just telling me, oh, yeah, the, his neighbors really like him a lot. Well, I don't know where they heard that because, you know, I looked them up on Truth Finders to find out who he, who are his neighbors, and on one side of the, the uh, his house where it was, was uh, a bunch of criminals. And I thought, oh man, he's surrounded by these criminals who have a long criminal history in a house there. And, you know, I, I'm thinking, well, he hooked up the criminals with the criminals, his neighbors, and then they're spreading rumors about how, how they got along so well. well. Are they plotting to kill me? <laughs> because, you know, the, the man was just distorting reality so much. You know, he he kept me... He kept me in in a in a prison. That man. I mean, he did everything he could to prevent me from uh, becoming a real professional musician. I mean, they did outrageous things to me to prevent me from uh, being successful. And uh, he just wanted to take over things for me and do them for me, and then get the credit and the money from it. You know, using me. Uh, he did that continually. He did that continually, and I didn't benefit from anything. I mean, I can, I can say that, um, you know, he used my music camp orchestra. He got permission from the conductor to arrange the theme from Ben Hur and he didn't even come to see it performed. He just, he, his daughter was performing with the orchestra and he didn't even come And the, the conductor looked down to the audience and where is he? Where is he? No, he's not there. No one told him that he wouldn't be there. So it was very embarrassing for me that he wasn't there. My babysitter was there, you know, who babysat me three times. My mother invited her, but it was always humiliation. I mean, 
imagine this. Okay, one night, uh, I'm 13, maybe 12 or 13 years old. Uh, they, my dad tells me, here's these uh, rhythm spoons. You know, you you and your sister are going to do a little uh, re- half-hour rehearsal, and then we're going to go down to Hollywood, and you're going to be on national TV uh, playing these rhythm spoons. And no, You know, no heads up to... Uh, 30 minutes of practice on the rhythm spoons. You know, it sounded like crap on TV, and it just made a mockery of us. I should have said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Who do you think you are telling me to do this? I'm not your slave. You know, it's like, it was unbelievable. It's like, just be glad you're on TV. No, no. I had a singing voice back then. I could sing, and I could play the viola, and they didn't ask me to do anything that I could do, and they made it humiliated us on national TV asking us to do that with a half hour rehearsal he was he was someone that I, I've got to tell you I do not miss one moment with him he was like a dead man being like with a dead man he my mother was trying to get him to do more things with me as his daughter and he once took me to a Rams game a LA Rams game in the in the 70s and uh I don't I think it was the early 70s maybe and uh Yeah, I enjoyed watching the game, but he never said a word to me. It was just totally quiet, didn't share anything. He was just not being a good dad, just not a good dad. I mean, he was just a dead man. That's all he was, was a dead man. So, you know, there's no, there's nothing there. Where's the soul? There's no soul to the man. He's like a dead man. So, I mean, I always felt like I was with with a dead man. Um, And so it's like, you know, he was nothing. He was nothing. And, And I just, I hate to to think of how people think that he's somebody when he's really he was really nobody he just was a big nobody the tv made a big deal over in the beginning because of his age that's all he was he didn't have any interesting conversations he had no ability to communicate well he had a very dull personality he liked to laugh you know but it would be empty laughs he didn't even know what he was laughing at sometimes and um I've stayed away from him and his illusions for a long time. And all I can say is that um, he was not a good husband to my mother. He was not a good father to my sister or me. And he was just a mediocre, everyday kind of guitarist. The people were jealous of him because they knew they could play better than him. So they were jealous of him. They wanted to take his place. But, you know, he was never considered somebody that they missed because they took away the bass guitar position from the Lawrence Welk show altogether. And it was just Neil LeVang. So they didn't really need him to begin with. They didn't need him at all. Um, I was doing all the chores on the property while he was always like doing these crazy things with his guitar. And he was just a nobody, a big, fat nobody. Okay, that's all he was. And his his music is worthless. No one wants his music. And he was abusive to my sister. He was abusive to me. He was a horrible dad. And that's the way that goes. He he ruined our lives, our futures, but with his plans because he just wanted us to have babies. And that's just tough that I didn't want to extend that family bloodline one iota. <laughs>